what's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So I wanted to go back through and I wanted to talk about some of the easy ways that you can add trees and vegetation inside of your 3D models. So I wanted to make a quick video just giving you some quick tips that are really going to help you populate vegetation inside of your models really quickly. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so first things first, this is a 3D warehouse model that I've downloaded. I really like this model. It's the house by Dewey K. And uh, so what I wanted to do is I brought this into um, Twin Motion and I've replaced some of the materials and things like that with Twin Motion materials, but I wanted to add some trees and some vegetation to this model. So I wanted to talk through a couple quick ways that you can add that vegetation into this model. So to start off, the easiest way is to go into your library, your vegetation and landscape, click on trees and just drag in the trees that you want. So in this situation, for example, if I wanted one of these hook thorn trees right here, I could just drag it over and place it. So that's definitely a way that you can do this. It's really easy to do. Um, so that's definitely one way to go about this. And so that's obviously the easiest way to do this, but sometimes you need to place a bunch of trees at one time. So this, for example, was a great place where I could just take these trees and just kind of drag them in here one at a time because I don't need a lot of them. But let's say over here that we need to add like some bushes or something like that along this whole line right here. You could definitely take those bushes and drag them in here like this. So you can definitely do that if you want to, but it could be really time consuming putting them along this whole length right here. And so let's say for example that I wanted to bring in one of these bushes and this is way too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale it down. So I'm just gonna adjust my scale and we'll just scale this down real quick so that it's not blocking my windows. But let's say I wanted to put a whole bunch of these along this path. So let's say I wanted a whole bunch of these kind of in this planting bed looking area. Well, instead of taking these and dragging them in one at a time, which I would have to rescale each one of these individually, what you can do instead is you can select your object, make sure that you have your translate tool active and you can hold the shift key and drag along this line. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a copy. And so when you create a copy, when you hold the shift key down in order to do this, it's gonna bring up this menu that's gonna allow you to set the number of copies as well as the spacing. So for this one, for example, right now it kept the spacing of wherever my mouse was when I let up on this. Well, I can just click this up button and just create a bunch of different copies. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. You can see how what this does is this creates a whole bunch of different copies along this face, which is great. Um, as long as you don't mind them looking kind of uniform like this. So when you use the copy mode, for example, it doesn't really like randomize the rotation or anything like that. So what it does is it just creates a copy along this length. And so I've got a few more that I need here. So I'm just gonna hold the shift key and do this again. And we'll go ahead and call that good. So that's another easy way to place these in here, which is especially good when it's all right if things are going to be uniform. But let's say we wanna do the same thing over here, but let's say that we wanted to use maybe some of these, let's find a smaller bush. So maybe we wanted to place either cattails or some of these snake weeds in here, but we wanted to place them kind of randomly along this uh, face. So if we wanted to place them randomly along this face, what we could do is you could just pick one, drag it in, pick another one, drag it in, and just randomly do that. So you could definitely place those that way if you wanted to, but there's a much easier way called multi-drop. So we'll just undo this. What multi-drop allows you to do is it allows you to hold the control key and click on multiple different objects over here. So let's say I wanted to randomly place either the snake weed or the cattails or whatever um, along this length. Well, by selecting all of these, what this is gonna do is this is gonna randomly select one of those objects. So you can see I can randomly place these different objects in here and it randomly picks one of those plants every single time. So one of those four plants is gonna get placed in here randomly. So this allows you to truly kind of randomize the placement of different objects if you have multiple kinds that you wanna drop in here. So you can see how every time I click, because I have those different settings selected, I get a different plant, or I have those different plants selected, so I get a different plant. 
Another way to drop vegetation inside of your twin motion renderings is to go into your nature settings and click on the option for vegetation. And this contains the tool designed to paint vegetation into your renderings. So in this situation, for example, let's say we wanted a whole bunch of trees in the background, like maybe some of these big leaf maples, um, something kind of big that's going to show up and kind of block this big open space. Well, what you could do is you could select these and you can drag them into your vegetation paint settings. So you may need to drag them in here separately, but then you can select them and you can use the paint tool in order to randomly place these. You can see how I can adjust the density of this by clicking and dragging the diameter tool right here. But then if I click and paint, this is gonna place a lot of these trees in here. And obviously this is way too many trees, so I'm gonna undo that and we're gonna turn our density down a little bit. But you, what you're gonna notice when you do this, and we'll turn our density way down, but you can click and drag and this will paint all of those trees onto whatever surface you have in here. So you can see how I can add these maple trees in the background really easily. So you can use this in order to quickly fill out spaces like this. And you do need to be a little bit careful to make sure that your trees aren't like intersecting with your building. Or in this situation, there's probably a few too many of these maple trees, but I think it's gonna work for what we're trying to do right here. You can use this tool in order to quickly place those. So I could use this again with maybe like a couple of the hookthorn trees. So I'll just hold control and select both of these and you can actually place a bunch of those hookthorn trees in here by clicking and dragging as well. So this is really good for mass placement of different vegetation objects. It's also how you add your grass inside of your renderings. But you can see how I was able to quickly add the vegetation of these different trees in here by doing that. So I am out of time for today. That's four quick ways to add different kinds of vegetations really quickly inside of Twin Motion. Um, if you're interested in the next video, I can talk about an easy way to add grass without getting that overlap onto the neighboring faces. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you enjoy this video? Did you find it helpful? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.